it came up on my Instagram Explore feed and I was like, hold the phone. I must make this sweater. This year I'm hoping to tackle the crazy loop fur pattern by Lyric Bagger that you can find in her Close Knits book. Um, I bought this on Amazon. You can only find the pattern now in this book, but there's some interesting techniques in, in here that I would recommend. Um, but honestly, I bought this book specifically for this pattern. It came up on my Instagram Explore feed and I was like, hold the phone, I must make this sweater. The pattern recommends 30 to 40 balls of yarn that are 100% wool, or at least the balls of the yarn that she recommends, I looked it up, is 100% wool. My first thought, or kind of one of my most likely paths forward is to use the wool of the Andes Knit Picks yarn to use 30 to 40 balls of yarn that's a pretty reasonably priced option and it's also very easy to acquire um, i think their colorways stay the same so although a dye lot may be a little different i think for this particular pattern it won't really be an issue so that's kind of my starting point the other thing to note is this is going to be a very, very heavy end product, like two to three pounds. And so you don't want to add any fibers or materials that will make it even heavier. So I'm kind of thinking on ways I can cut costs, but also make this something that's more wearable. I don't know that I'll be in a lot of situations where a First of all, this sweater is pretty crazy as it is, so I want to make sure I can wear it every opportunity that I get, and I don't want to make it too hot where that's not reasonable. I think this is going to be a project where you just have to do it, and maybe I pick a color where I won't be upset to have multiple sweaters with that color if I end up buying 30 balls of the same yarn. I want it to be more interesting than that. Like, I guess I could just get 10 balls of three different colors. Yes, that is what I'm going to do. I've decided. We have a winner. Easy peasy. Um, that way, if I don't use it all, I am not stuck with a massive amount of the same color. I think I am going to do the Wool of the Andes. Um, and I'm feeling navy, like dark, a dark, deep navy, maybe like a baby blue. And maybe like an oatmeal color or a white. I'm going to do some mood boarding on Pinterest, I think. My, my initial thought was kind of a beige with white and blue, but I think the blue will be more versatile and, and it can be sort of a statement color without be veering too far from a neutral. Awesome. <laughs> Glad we could come to that decision together. I got a little bit of buyer's remorse and I decided that I didn't need to buy all of the yarn at once. So I bought one or two balls of each colorway that I was looking at in each fiber and I'm going to test swatch it to make sure I like it, make sure I love it, because um, if I'm gonna spend $300 on yarn for this project, it better be the most amazing thing I've ever seen. So 
I bought a reasonable amount that if I don't like them together, I can use them up in other projects, but um, kind of dipping my toes in to <laughs> this project before, you know, diving head first. So while I wait for that yarn to get to me so I can do the test swatch, I'm going to use some scrap yarn to learn how to do this loopy technique. Um, that way, when I get the yarn, I can get started on the test swatch right away and I don't have to mess around with my nice yarn to learn. So that's gonna be um, <laughs> what I'm showing now. It's kind of like in real time learning this technique. I've actually tried to learn this technique before and I think it was fairly easy. It's very time consuming. Um, but it was something that I was interested in doing a pattern on my own, like drafting my own pattern. And when I taught myself this loopy technique, I had only made like one scarf ever. So I was definitely not in a position to be trying to make a pattern with loopy fabric because yeah, that is pretty advanced in my book. So join me as I attempt to learn, teach myself again. To practice this stitch, I'm using uh, two balls of the same acrylic yarn that I have had for years. The recommended needle size I think is 5.5. And since I'm using two, I was thinking maybe I'll go up to seven millimeter if I have it I think I do this is my Chiago interchangeable ne needle set maybe someday I'll do a review on it um okay so 5.5 is recommended I don't have a seven I have six 6.5 and then eight Maybe I'll add a third one and just do the eight. That seems like a good, I'm totally guessing here. I have no idea what I'm doing. Let me grab another ball of that red because I have so much of it. Um, and this is, this is a perfect project to use this up because I don't know that there will ever be a time where I feel called to use fire truck red acrylic yarn. So let's get started. to start with a foundation row because it was hard to knit into the cast on edge so hopefully this makes it a little easier I'm going to watch another video that one wasn't totally clear to me and I think it's because it's kind of far away all right, now that we got that started, we can actually do our first attempt. I should have pulled this yarn from the center because this is very frustrating. This, 
I'll just pull out a bunch of it. Hopefully it doesn't get tangled. Alrighty. So we knit the first one. Knit, loop it around. They were saying you should switch the loop to your right. Okay. My god. Oh god. <laughs> okay, let's start over. I'll take my My god, this is gonna take me I don't think this project is gonna be finished this year. If that loop is any indication of what is to come. I am in for a world of pain. <laughs> Hopefully only figuratively, but Part of my problem is the needle sizes too. Maybe I should. <laughs> no. Go up a size. I don't know if that would help me here. Just introduce different issues. I mean I'm I'm definitely getting the, the loops. Maybe they are. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's a lot going on here, but like, loops are happening. Um, I can see how this is going to be super time consuming, super heavy, super yarn consuming. But yeah, I'll work on this and let you know how it goes. The one positive of this is you only knit on one side of the fabric. And I think part of the pattern is knit um, not in the round, so knit flat. So it'll give me a really great opportunity to appreciate purling and look forward to purling instead of you know, I think I'm like most people who are not the biggest fan of it. So that's one positive, silver lining. I think I need to figure out how to knit looser. Because this is like crazy. I wonder what if once I get through the rows of <laughs> once I get through the the first row of loops if my tension will just become easier to manage. We got the um, first couple skeins of yarn. It's pretty early in the morning, so please excuse me. <laughs> And I'm going to open it up and, and see what I think. And fingers crossed I can get started on this project in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. 
This color is perfect. It's coming up kind of green with my like t-shirt. I wonder if I use sort of a white a white background if you can see. Oh yeah, that's much better. Um, yeah, it's like a really deep blue. Let me pull it back a little. It looks like almost black. Yeah, this is perfect. I mean, it's called Midnight Heather. So the almost black blue kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this color. Next, oh, excuse the rustling, is the Chroma in Narwhal. So this is pretty light. Um, I've used this yarn before and the one that I used had pretty dramatic color changes. But I think this one, I'm just gonna open it up a little. This one, yeah, the, I think this is the darkest. It's cute, I like it, fun. Okay, moving on. Uh, I got a couple of these. Oh, this is the other color. So, this is the Midnight Heather and the Sapphire Heather um, with the Norwell. And this is the main color of the sweater. So there will be about 30 balls of this yarn um, and then about five or six of this one. And I'm using this sort of as an accent. So I don't even know if I'll use this throughout the whole sweater. Um, but I think like overall, this is going to be the main tone of the sweater, the main vibe. And then I got two stains of mohair. Got this one. I think I'll probably hold this together. I mean, frankly, they'll all be held together, but um, this to like kind of tone, tone this down. So if I'm using this, I'll use this darker mohair. Um, and this is the Aloft lace weight. Actually, I don't even, yeah, super kid mohair. And then finally, I got one much lighter color. These go together perfectly in terms of like the tones, but I don't know that I'll want this in addition to these other colors. Like this one already leans very light and honestly, if it came like one or two shades darker, I would have gotten that one instead. Um, but I chose this one because it was all over blue with no other other colors uh, in the mix. So I think this just adds lightness that I'm not really hoping for. Like overall, I want it to be a pretty dark sweater with bright like pops of light. Um, so today or tomorrow, I'll probably work on the test swatch and then um, you'll be able to see that in next week's video. That's it for now.